We come to this place for terror. We come to sinful cuts to scream, to laugh, to cry. Because we need that, all of us, that overwhelming dread we feel when the lights begin to dim and we go somewhere we've never been before. Not just terrified, but somehow possessed together. Horrifying images spoken directly into your ear. Kills that you can feel. Somehow, slaughter feels good in a place like this. Our slashers feel like the worst part of us. And stories feel insane and unstoppable. Because here, they are. Sinful cuts. We make horror horrible. Hey, Sinner, Sean here from Sinful Cuts. I am doing our Shortcuts episode solo tonight. Um, Shannon and I had a little little technical difficulty during the week. We had actually done a, a remote um, uh, remote podcast, but unfortunately, uh, the audio, Shannon's audio uh, didn't come through. Um, a lot of fingers are pointing at me. A lot of accusations that I want to make this a solo podcast, and I sabotaged her audio. Prove it, is all I'm saying. Prove it in a court of law. Or you know what, better yet, prove it on the streets, Shannon, if you dare. My God, I take that back. Uh, You can obviously beat me up, and I'm drunk with power because I'm all by myself, and you know how this turns out. So, all right, sinners, what we're going to do is I'm going to just do our shortcuts. This is the uh, the mini episode that we do that gives you all the horror happenings for the week. Uh, sit back. I hope you enjoy. I hope I can uncover some gems for you. And let's get to it. So, Shannon always starts with birthdays for the week. So, oh, we've got some birthdays to talk about. It gets better every time I do it. <clears throat> So just in case you miss Shannon, that was her. All right, so for birthdays, for the life of me, I cannot remember what we actually discussed for birthdays when we tried to do this on Monday. So I did my own research, and Shannon, I don't think I have any of them correct, but these are actual birthdays, uh, horror movie birthdays for uh, this week. So let's start with, oh boy, look, look at this one. Let's start with Scanners. David Cronenberg, and I just, I'm very proud of myself because I'm finally pronouncing his last name correctly. David Cronenberg's, uh, I mean, look, is this the best film that he's ever done? I don't know. It could be. I mean, I would put it into a cage match with The Fly, and I'm sure everybody out there listening right now has their own personal favorite, but Scanners has got to be pretty high up there, right? So, Michael Ironside, uh, just destroying it on screen. This movie is just... It's an it's iconic. I mean, it's one of the all time gems. So this one, uh, Scanners, was released on the fourteenth of January, nineteen eighty one. Sinners, I know I've mentioned this in the past. Back when I was a child, we used to have these things called newspapers, and inside these newspapers there would be an arts and entertainment section, and in there they would have these full page ads for the movies coming out that Friday. Um, sometimes they'd even be in color, but you would have these gigantic ads for movies like, I know I'd mentioned it before, like Evil Dead 2 with the skull with the eyeballs looking at you, always looking at you into your soul. And as a child, you would be flipping through to see if Star Wars was magically back in theaters seven years later for some reason. And then you would see a skull looking at you and it would make you feel things in your tiny little body, good and bad. And Scanners happen to be one of those posters. It's Michael Ironside, and he's like all clenched up, and the veins are popping out, and his eyes are all white, and his hair's actually on fire, and he's scan. You can tell that he's doing, you haven't seen the movie, but you know he's doing something horrible to someone because it's Michael Ironside. So, you know, it's just this, some of my childhood trauma that then, I don't know, evolves into the best thing that ever happened because it make it created this love of horror. I don't know. You probably have similar stories or maybe you don't. And that's bad for me, I suppose. But all right. So that's scanners. 
Next, we have From Dust Till Dawn, and that came out on the 19th of January in 1996, uh, directed by Robert Rodriguez, based on a script by Robert Rodriguez and uh, Quentin Tarantino, who also stars in the film, with, uh, you know, uh, the cover model of Handsome Boy magazine, uh, years 96 through yesterday, George Clooney. And man, what a fun romp this movie is. So, Dust Till Dawn, kisses all over your face. Uh, then let's see. Oh, then we've got one of what, in my opinion, one of the best found footage movies, uh, and one of the best kaiju movies, and one of the best creature feature movies all rolled into one, and that's Cloverfield. And that came out on the 18th of January in 2008, uh, directed by Matt Reeves, based off a screenplay by Drew Goddard. Uh, I think both of those kids have made out pretty well. This movie is just, it's kind of everything that you're looking for in an out-of-control monster movie. And I think the special thing about this movie is that no one knew what it was. No one had any idea. It was, um, you know, uh, secret marketing. We would just get these posters with various, like, uh, you know, a chunk missing out of the Statue of Liberty. You know, they could obviously tell that it was, like, clawed, like the cake from the It Lives poster. And it was very exciting, you know. I'm not going to say that we don't get that now. Nothing comes to mind immediately, but, but I, oh, shoot, you know what? I take it back. It's actually happening right now with what we think is um, Osgood Perkins' new movie, Long Legs. There are two teaser trailers. The name of the movie has not been announced. It's a lot of speculation, but everybody thinks that it's this new movie, Long Legs. We could all be proven wrong, but isn't that great if we are all wrong and it happens to be something else? This kind of marketing, especially for horror movies, I mean, I guess it would be hard to do it for like Cheaper by the Dozen 3. Who would give a shit? But for horror movies, it, it's so exciting and I just love it. So I'm looking for more of that. And I'm probably going to ruin everything by saying these words out loud. But lately, we've been getting some trailers that are go going back to, to, you know, an older trailer model of giving you a little bit of a tease and not giving the whole movie away in two minutes and 30 seconds. So more of that, please. That is great. And lastly, I say the best for last, um, this is a movie called The Relic, and this came out on the 10th of January in 1997. This is just, hands down, one of the best B-movie creature features, um, directed by uh, Peter Hames, uh, based off of a, a really, really solid novel, also called The Relic, by Douglas Preston and Lincoln Child. And it stores Tom Sizemore, uh, you know, coming off a hot hand. Uh, if, let's see, if this was 97, this is either possibly right before or right after Saving Private Ryan. But, I mean, Tom Sizemore has, look, he, he's, he, he, you know, RIP. Um, he certainly had his issues and his problems. But putting that aside, this man was a phenomenal character actor. And he he has left a body of work. I mean, The Relic, Private Ryan, which I mentioned, Heat, he, uh, Strange Days. He's got a body of work. Oh my gosh, um, um, uh, 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 Natural Born Killers. You know, I mean, he had a, he had a real hot streak there for a while before you know b before things uh, unfortunately went in a different direction for him. But man, oh man, he's having a lot of fun in this movie. And Penelope Ann Miller is having a ton of fun in this movie so if you haven't seen the relic by all means please seek it out and if creature features your bag like it is with me you really can't do better than this one it is just all the b-movie uh scares and frights and fun and you're just gonna have you're just gonna have a great time okay so uh uh shannon take us out that was it for and that is all the movies that were hard for you to die Thank you, Shannon. That well said. We're going to quickly go into um, releases, and it's a very short list. We have T.I.M., Tim, and that is a movie about an AI humanoid who becomes obsessed with his programmer, and that programmer is none other than Georgina Campbell, who is sneakily becoming one of my favorite scream queens. Um, you know, she just knocked it out of the damn park 
with barbarians. And uh, um, she was in Bird Barks, Bird Barks, Bird Barks, which is a new movie um, in the Paw Patrol uh, uh, quadrilogy. Oh, for fuck's sake, Sean, get a new mouth. She was in Bird Box, Barcelona, which had its moments. I think it started off real strong. Didn't really land for me. But that's just my dumb opinion. But she is she's making some genre choices that are exciting and she's a phenomenal actor and I can't wait to see this movie and I can't wait to see what she does next. Um then okay, let's uh let's quickly shift into books and as always we do not mention books without mentioning Emily Hughes. I steal all of the book descriptions from readjumpscares.com and Emily painstakingly puts together the one and only one stop shop for horror literature plus a little bit of fantasy plus a little you know i mean we're we brush up against some sci-fi and some fantasy there as well so if that's uh if that's something you're interested in please check it out it's not all horror but it's mostly horror and we love it okay so we have a couple of couple of real cool books here uh, this week, let's start with Master of Rods and Strings, and that's by Jason Mark uh, Harris. And um, the description of this is a uh, jealous of the attention lavish, lavished upon the puppetry talents. I did not mispronounce that. That is puppetry talents of his dear sister, the, and tormented by visions of her torture at the hands of the mysterious Uncle Pavan, who recruited her for her for his arcane school, Elias is determined to learn the true nature of occult puppetry. I, I'm going to repeat that, occult puppetry, and you just sold the book, no matter the hideous cost, in order to exact vengeance. Occult puppetry is something I need to dedicate the rest of my life to, and yes, okay, so I cannot wait to read that book. That's The Master of Rods and Strings by Jason Mark Harris, and that is um, published by Crystal Lake, and that came out on the 12th. So go, please, hit up your local bookstore and snatch that up. The next one we have is, oh boy, all right, this person, if, if you're into horror literature, or just literature in general, and you don't know the name Ellen Datlow, well, please learn it, because Ellen puts together what is hands down one of the best anthologies every single year, and it's called The Best in Horror uh, of the Year, and this one happens to be Volume 15. Uh, that's by Nightshade uh, is publishing that, and that comes out on the 16th, uh, which is already, so it's out. Um, I know from personal experience that I have uh, I've purchased these anthologies year after year after year because not only do you get these incredible short stories um, from established, well-known and established authors, but I use it as a treasure map to discover new authors. And it, what better way than just an absolute, just banger of a short story that hooks you in and then you get to you get to do what what, what i love which is um you get to uh, search out their their entire you know canon of work and discover all of these hidden gems that weren't on your radar and i can't tell you how many great novels and how many sh great short story collections i've discovered this way so ellen my eternal thanks. You put together just inc an incredible anthology every year. Um, and I'm looking forward to volume 16 next year. Keep it up. The next one we have is called The Drop of Venom. And boy, oh boy, do I love that title. And that's by uh, Sajni Patel. And that came out on the 16th. And that's by Rick Ro or Reardon Presents. And you heard that right. Rick Reardon from the Percy Jackson um, books. So listen to this synopsis and it's going to make sense. So Circe goes YA in this unapologetically feminist retelling of the Medusa myth steeped in Indian mythology. Well, that sounds fantastic. It's a YA epic fantasy addition to the Rick Reardon Presents imprint. So fantastic. Okay, you got a drop of venom. I saved this last book. I was just about to say I saved this last book for last because words are hard and I dom. 
This book is called The Wretched Valley, and this is by Jenny Kiefer, and it came out on the 16th from Quirk. All right, two things. I'm going to get into the synopsis in one second, but I'm going to point you in the direction of our good friend, Neil McRobert, of Talking Scared, the Talking Scared podcast, because he has Jenny Kiefer on this week. I've already listened to the episode, and as always, I mean, Neil is just, it's its just one of the best podcasts you're going to listen to, and if you, it just hands down, just because he's so good at it, and the, his interviewing skills are just second to none, but if you're into horror literature, and I think you are, because you're here, this is a must listen. His guests are incredible, and like I said, the interviews and... The, the 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 casual style it's kind it's so conversational but it's always interesting even if you're not even if the book isn't necessarily something that you you know you're dying to read the interviews always so interesting cuz they uncover so much about the genre and so much about writing in general and it's just you know chef's kiss to, to Neil uh you know he's just he's just a, a true gem so let's get into the book shall we okay check this out This trip is going to be Dylan's big break. Her geologist friend Clay has discovered an untouched cliff face in the Kentucky wilderness, and she's going to be the first person to climb it. It's exciting for climbers, right? Together with Clay, his research assistant Sylvia, and Dylan's boyfriend Luke, Dylan's going to document her achievement on Instagram and finally cement her place as the next rising star in rock climbing. Okay. Seven months later, three bodies are discovered in the trees just off the highway. All are in various states of decay. One, a stark white skeleton. The second, emptied of its organs. And the third, a mutilated corpse with its tongue, eyes, ears, and fingers removed. But Dylan is still missing, and no trace of her dead or alive has been discovered. Were the climbers murdered? Shrug. Did they succumb to cannibalism? Double shrug. Or are their impossible bodies the work of an even more sinister force? Yeah, all signs point to that one. I'm I'm shaking my magic eight ball. Yeah, all signs point to yes on that. This dread-inducing debut builds to a blood-curdling climax and will leave you shocked to the final twist. I mean, sinners, if that's not selling you on this damn book, what do I have to do? What do I have to do for you? Oh, you can make me so mad sometimes. Okay, now we're going to um, wrap it up with two things. We're going to talk about streaming. Um, we've got Destroy All Monsters on Shutter. I know I mentioned it last time. I just wanted to mention it again. Alex Winter is really great. Um, the practical effects are so much fun. You really need to watch this movie just for the practical effects. This movie is having so much fun with them, and they're so clever, and there's some great little cameos in it, and the movie is it now fits into that uh, little niche of horror comedies that work well and really pay off and delight you. So there you go. Um, Then we've got on Screenbox, we've got Horror in the High Desert. I have not watched it, but it keeps popping up on in my research. And when I see a movie more than like two, three times, and it's mentioned, you know, in a positive way, I, I'm like, okay, that's going on my TBW, my to-be-watched list. Then we have The Elderly. Now, this is the same team that did The Passenger a couple of years back uh, in 2021. This comes from Spain. These movies come from Spain. So don't confuse it with the movie that just got released um, uh, called The Passengers, uh, U.S. production. Uh, This one's from Spain. So The Passenger was about occupants of a van. They're transporting a wounded uh, woman. And and everyone's trying to avoid sitting next to her because something is... (laughs) Just Lovecrafty and not right with her. Please watch the movie. You're going to have fun with it. Um, so they did The Elderly, which I've been really, really excited to check out. And that's finally on Shudder. Um, so this movie, uh, let's see, the, the description of this movie is uh, an octogenarian who enters into a state of dementia after the sudden suicide of his wife uh, sparks a series of paranormal ev- events that will put his family's 
uh, lives at risk. I just have a real good feeling about this movie. I cannot wait to check it out. So uh, I think I might do a little double feature of uh, Passenger, The Passenger, and then The Elderly. Um, let's give credit where credit's due. It's uh, directed by Raul uh, uh, Cerezo and Fernando Gonzalez Gomez. So check that out. And then we go to um, The Human Trap from South Korea. All I know about this is that it's about a bunch of campers that go into the woods and then there is a, a, an organ harvesting operation that they stumble upon. And I don't think good things happen from that point forward. I could be wrong. Maybe they just all have a cup of tea. Maybe they don't. Check it out. That is it. So I can't do anything until Shannon takes us out of here. So Shannon, would you be so kind? As I said, every single week, and that is a card. And that's the end of our show.